What is up, metal and heavy music fans? It's time for Trench Talk, and I am your host, Flight of Icarus from MetalTrenches.com. As always, you can listen to this podcast on YouTube, iTunes, Spotify, basically any platform you can think of. But regardless of where you listen, please do follow us there and subscribe to the YouTube channel as well for more daily reviews, tier lists, and other content. Today, I have an interview with hardcore metalcore band Capra, highly recommended for fans of Every Time I Die. Their new album, In Transmission, will be coming out April 23rd, and trust me, you are going to want to mark your calendar for this one. It is a banger. So (laughs) with that out of the way, let's get into the interview. Hey, I'm Tyler, and uh, we're in Capra. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, as Tyler, are in Capra. Yeah. Uh, I'm Crow, and I'm the vocalist for Capra. Cool, and I wanted to, I, have, I feel like I have to get this out of the way right from the beginning, because I know listeners are going to be interested to hear about it. So clearly, every time I die fans, is that oh, yeah. like a given at this point? I mean, the comparison's definitely there, so... Was that like a a big driving force from the start, or were there <laughs> crow not so much? <laughs> no, I mean I think they're cool. I just, um, I mean I've listened to them like maybe three times, but oh, I wow. do think they're really cool. I think I need to listen to them more, <laughs> probably just like out of respect, just because obviously like you know i don't want to be like some asshole that's like oh like just being kind of a stick in the mud like i want to know i want to be educated on people that we you know clearly like my guitarist and drummer draw a lot of inspiration from but what i've heard they sound really cool you know yeah yeah i'm a huge fan i've been a fan uh you know since i got into hardcore which was about 12 13 years old and uh they're just the riffs the lyrics the drums everything together it's it's a perfect band to me I know the listeners can't see, but I know you can see behind me. I have this poster right here. I got multiple posters, man. I'm, I'm <laughs> huge every time I die, fam. How how long have you been into them? Like, when did you first start listening? Uh, Hot Damn was, was the first me too. time I really got in every time I die. I learned about them actually from a Hellfest DVD that I had. And their live performance just shook me. And then I started listening to him more. I listened to Hot Damn, and it, it was almost like a life-changing experience. Yeah. I think I heard Ebola Rama, and I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, what is this? And it's and not... the video, and they're, they're all skating around. Yeah, like... The, yeah. They're going insane. It's like, you know what? <laughs> this is the kind of party rock and roll band I want to be in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What's your favorite album? Uh, Man, that switches so much. But... Probably Hot Damn. I think my top three would be Hot Damn, Low Teens, and From Parts Unknown. Yeah, no, interesting choices. I, I feel like I bring that up a lot, and those aren't always the choices that come up. But it's it's always it, fun to just talk about them in general. Personally, I, I have kind of a weird choice, too. Like, my personal favorite is actually um, New Junk Aesthetic, which I feel like nobody picks that one. But that's just, like, all ragers, like, every it, single track. <laughs> We can't sit here and say that all of their albums aren't all riffs. Yeah. Because they pack, they pack the albums with riffs. It's it's incredible what they do. Yeah. You know, it's interesting, Crow, to hear that you're like kind of just getting into them because it's not just the guitar, too. Like something about like how you write your lyrics and some of your delivery, too, even kind of reminds me a little bit of like there's some there's some Keith Buckley there, but who would you consider to be like your major inspirations on on your vocal approach? Um, my inspirations honestly change like daily, just because I like have that kind of obsessive mind where I'm obsessed with something one day and then the next, you know, like it's something else. And I try to continue to be like learning from different sources like every day. But I have to say that probably the most consistent one that's been like like the biggest inspiration on me is Henry Rollins. Oh, hell yeah. For the longest time. Yeah. And then probably also, I know that there's like a lot of Tom Mariah that's like kind of like in my brain that I can't separate. <laughs> so those are probably my two biggest inspirations as far as like metal vocalists. But just as far as like, uh, I was saying this in our last interview, as far as like delivery and emotion, Janis Joplin is a huge inspiration Ooh. for me as well. Yeah, I could see that. That's a good one. 
I'm a huge Henry Rollins fan. Like not just yeah. like his music, but like I listen to all the of his spoken word. Oh my god. Oh yeah, me too. Yeah. He's I re listen to that stuff regularly and he just cracks me up. But then he also gets yeah. so poignant too. Like honestly, when he does that whole speech about uh Joe Cole, like it it makes me tear up every that. time. He talks about his friend who got like killed in front of him. Oh, uh, I do have I have um that uh the poetry collection see a grown man see a grown man cry now watch him yeah. die and like he kind of goes into like all the emotions about that stuff too it's crazy yeah there's a there's a video of him doing his like stand up and there's a whole section where he tells that story and it just like uh, it's so heartbreaking but... yeah i never actually listen i can't like i don't know i just can't listen to like i can't like straight up listen to somebody talk about something like that or i will it's freak an... out and have yeah. like, a horrible week so I'll, it's... Just, I'll just read his like <laughs> just, just, just read it, it and have him yeah. tell funny stories too he's yeah. he's so versatile but yeah i love him and i'm a ministry fan too i see the t-shirt too uh, are, yeah. are you like a kind of listener of a little bit of everything <laughs> um yeah yeah i think so yeah okay well i wanted to talk too about one of the other things that fascinated me about your band is that and and maybe I'm wrong in this, but it feels like such a like underdog story. Like I had never heard of Capra until what that the the two song single dropped, and then all of a sudden like you're you're signed and you're like to a big label and you're making an album and you're kind of like the talk of the underground. And I mean, did you experience that the same way, or was it more gradual than that? Uh, it's been gradual for a long time, but it was it was really out of nowhere. Um, you know, we've been a band since 2000, late 2015, and uh, we released we released an album, which is none of the songs that you hear now. We scrapped all of that. Uh, we oh, had wow. another list, and things were just kind of on like a middle lane type level where we were just kind of floating and then we got crow and we started to write better songs <laughs> and, uh, and after that we we started working with matt bacon and matt bacon got us uh to all of the people that needed to hear us and it just kind of picked up and started rolling so yeah it went uh <laughs> it went from zero to a hundred pretty quickly now, Crow, anything you would add to that? Like, what was that experience like for you? And and also just, like, the signing, too. Like, was that a big deal? Was that, like, a big, like, holy shit moment? Or was it just kind of like, oh, cool? <laughs> um, oh, man, it's, like, it's, it's kind of hard to put into words just because it's, even to me, like, the amount of success that we're seeing, which is not huge, but it's substantial, you know, at this at this point in time, it's still something that I'm having trouble processing, I guess. Like, for me it's still just something that like I kind of, I'm like doing with my homies. You know what I mean? <laughs> so like anytime we like see like, like for example, when we were on devil's dozen, like two weeks in a row, that for yeah. me was like, it's just so surreal. It's crazy. Like it feels like it's like, where did this come from? You know, like just, it felt like a couple of months ago, nobody knew who we were. Um, and I guess it's only been since I've been with you guys two years now, I think is what we just, we agreed on. But even then it seems like for, for so long, it seems like we were just kind of like, just grinding it out, just like doing a bunch of writing and doing a bunch of hoping and wishing and talking about our goals and stuff. And all of a sudden you start seeing those goals materialize. It's definitely like, definitely very invigorating. Yeah. It's we been, definitely, okay. go we definitely ahead. Like had it in mind, you know, we, we had goals set, but what we were doing in the beginning was just, it was just fun. You know, it mm -hmm. would just play shows to our friends and stuff like that. And then I, I don't think we really, I think what she's trying to say is like we we don't truly feel it yet. Like it's very surreal, and we yes. know it's there. But with the pandemic going on and everything, and not being able to play shows, like we really don't we don't feel that success just yet. All right. That makes sense. But I'm I will say like from the outside, it's been it's been really cool, and I I have a feeling that a lot of people in kind of the the hardcore scene, the metalcore scene, the mathcore scene, like. Or there, there's a buzz going, and it's it's been it's been really cool. And the new album is awesome. <laughs> like it is it is really sick. I I am just blown away by it, and just excited to to hear anything 
that comes after that too. So, um, and then fun stuff too, like Crow, it's been fun to see you doing that like Dungeons and Dragons thing. Yeah. <laughs> What's that like, like getting together with these other people from these other bands and, and just, is that something you were like already doing like in, in your own time or is that new? Well, that was the first time that I play. I mean, I'm always doing like, you know, playing video games and whatever, but like that was the first time that I played Dungeons and Dragons. And I was so freaked out because I was just thinking like, this is going to be like, on you know like a big like twitch channel and i don't know really what i'm doing but thankfully everybody was super supportive and i find that um it's kind of that way with the entire D D community people are like i mean i think that's like one of the rules or whatever right in the handbook it's like you're supposed to be super super uh inclusive and i feel that that has really rang true but also i feel like it's one of those things that when i'm like old and graying i'm still going to be telling my grandkids about like that one time i played D for like <laughs> metal blade twitch it was super fun a well whole you lot of... you went all in too you were like the only I one sure who like did. got all dressed up and everything yeah. i was like this is sick that's awesome <laughs> yeah. yeah i wanted to really really like i wanted to pay respect to uh to D D as a whole it made it really fun to watch too i, yeah. I knew about D and and I watched majority of it. <laughs> Super fun. Yeah, really? my my wife got into it like earlier this year too. I think it's like another good sort of like pandemic thing to do. Oh, like yeah. <laughs> it's just Definitely. person yeah. that's supposed to play D and D, but I've just never played it. I want to, dude. I want to get into another campaign, and I'm gonna drag you in with me. Yeah, <laughs> like, I want to do accents. I want to get dressed up. <laughs> I'm <laughs> well i want to also talk about the lyrics too so and and so again crow i'm really glad that you're here too because i have i had a lot of thoughts like just digging through like i was telling tyler i'm like fuck i feel like i need a lyric sheet like this is this is some heavy stuff and like sometimes i'm like that like leaning into to try to make sure i'm picking up every word and and trying to not dissect it, but like take it all in. So, I mean, the the themes seem pretty obvious to me, but do you want to talk a little bit about kind of what the the driving force of, of that aspect of the album is? Um, I wish I could say that it's like some grand concept album where all the songs kind of tie into each other, but I feel like they all kind of have their own thing. You know what I mean? Like each song kind of is its own, well, for the most part is its own concept. But um, I think that a big... Uh, probably the most resounding theme of the album is I really, really want to uh, draw attention to uh, different mental health issues that I and like other people are dealing with, especially like, you know, like, well, I don't know how much I want to get into it, but <laughs> especially like in a world in which kind of like social media is ruling and like, you know, you have to have money to be heard, stuff like that. I want to, um, I, I kind of want to just talk about how I feel in that particular uh, kind of society. Yeah. Well, definitely, you've succeeded at that. <laughs> I mean, it definitely well, comes you. I through. That. And I was telling Tyler too, like I work in mental health, like that's my primary job too. No, so I maybe that's part that. of why I connected with this. Like my day to day job is I've got like a team of counselors, and uh, we work like high intensity, like kids that are just short of going to like residential treatment or the hospital or just came out of it, and they like meet in the people's <laughs> homes three times a week and and safety plan and have to go out 24 hours crisis calls you know whatever and and work with a pretty broad population of, of uh, young people to both you know boys girls it's it's crazy and it's it's right. extra sad too because like suicide rates are way up especially for young people and then mm -hmm. out here in uh, i'm in portland oregon the young homeless population is like the highest in the country out here too so just lots of people on the street so i wow. think when i hear an album like this i was saying like sometimes you know i'll see like a, a facebook movement or or even like a march and just something about it kind of sometimes makes me roll my eyes where it just doesn't feel like real in some cases, whereas I hear an album like this and I was like, fuck, yeah, I want to like, <laughs> I want to like get up and and like do something about. Yeah. Well, about that means a stuff. lot. I really do appreciate it, especially with your background. It does mean a lot. So thank you. Yeah, I mean, it's important. And and I think it resonates with like 
the kids that we're working with too. Like I've even seen that, like when I used to work in residential, I'd have kids come to me and they'd, they'd introduce me to bands too, but I'd see why they connected with them. Like I remember I worked with this one kid who just loved Tyler, the creator, and I'd never heard of him before that point. And so mm -hmm. I went and listened to him. I'm like, this is fucked up, but I get why this kid <laughs> like is into it. And I became a huge right. fan at that point too. But... Well, uh, yeah. Very heavy stuff for sure. Yeah. Like lyrical content in that regard. Yeah, for sure. And and again, like with this album too, there's I mean, there's clearly allusions to it's hard too because this will be on YouTube and sometimes they'll like demonetize stuff for, <laughs> based on phrases that you say, but you know, uh people let's just say people being taken advantage of um like domestic violence it seems like too mm -hmm. um and again like all these all these things that i work with on a day-to-day -day that are just just i think people don't even realize just how bad it is when you're like really in it so right. do you have like a, a favorite song like that that hits you like really personally when you're performing it <sighs> when i'm performing it i want to say that um hmm. Probably, I probably actually have to go with Paper Tongues on that one. We always talk about Locust Preacher is one of our favorites just because that one is like, you know, for me, I wrote it about my sleep paralysis and that's something that is like, oh, was always something that was really scary and difficult to understand, especially as a kid when I started experiencing it. But as far as like actually like it hitting me hard, like during a performance, I think Paper Tongues is the one just because uh, that per that song I wrote about like a, a relationship that I have with a family member that's uh, extremely like um, strained. Well, maybe not so much anymore, but used to be really strained at one time. And so I keep reliving it every time I sing that song, like the different things that we experience together. And uh, I guess that's the hardest part about it. Yeah. Is that good or bad though? Like. Um, I think that it brings some sort of authenticity to the performance. Like definitely what definitely. I'm feeling is real and it's not just me being up there putting on a show. I mean, I am literally putting on a show, but I am actually feeling what I'm singing about. Um, obviously like it kind of sucks to be sad <laughs> but whenever I'm doing it, but it's, uh, it has to be done. So I yeah. guess it's good and bad in ways. I mean, it's from, it feels like a catharsis to me. Like I, it, comes through that like this is real like that I, if I, there was one word i would use to describe this album it's probably real like this hit, oh, i was God. even re-listening to i can't remember which song it was but i was i was getting some clips together for when i edit this um and have some transitions and i think it was maybe it was um i mean my favorite still is like right from the beginning the first time that i heard torture ship i was like i was hooked from that moment mm -hmm. on and I can't remember if it was that or one of the other songs, but I, I honestly like I started to tear up a little bit and I'm like, I don't know why this is hitting me so hard, but like, <laughs> shit, man, I'm just I'm emotional right that. now. Thank you. And there are just so many good ones. Like, uh, I love the Locust Preacher. Uh, I, I really like Medusa, Red Guillotine, Deadbeat, Assailant, like just so many like a nice mix, too, on this album of like really thoughtful and kind of like intense stuff but then like really fun and the d beats kick in and like it's a weird almost like yin and yang in that way where like it's heavy content but it's like a lot of it's kind of like fun and sort of like punk rock a lot of the time too so i'm i'm wondering too like tyler like how how does your like writing process go too and also like does the music come first and then like you're putting the the lyrics over it and crow you're like listening to it and writing along or is it more collaborative like how does it all kind of come together uh it typically starts with guitar i stress myself out over riffs and i just write <clears throat> i write and write and write and write and write and then uh we go into our rehearsal space we flesh it out and then crow will put lyrics to it um but yeah the the album is meant to be sort of like like a roller coaster. It's supposed to show you that like intense emotion, uh, but it's also supposed to be just like a kick in the ass, fun party at the same time. So we just, I mean, we just grind it out. <laughs> and it comes together. When you're writing your riffs, and it's always interesting for me to talk to guitarists about this because I've, I've had a few react and be like, I've never even thought about it that way. But like, you know, what, what's in your head? Like, are you trying to convey some sort of idea, some sort of emotion, or is it more so just like very technical and musical in nature? Like what, what does that look like for you? It kind of depends on where I'm at 
in the song. Sometimes it'll start off with what I call like the chaos riff where it's just <laughs> absolutely nuts. Sometimes I'll go a little bit more melodic. Uh, but majority of the time, like if I'm just standing and even in conversation, I'm writing like in my head <clears throat> and I, I'll do it on my cell phone to where I'll record like myself humming into my cell phone sometimes. <laughs> It keeps me awake at night. I'm thinking of riffs. And if I'm <laughs> in the middle of songs, like if I'm dead in the middle of writing a song, I will literally just play that song over and over in my head until I find the part that connects to it next. And so I guess you could say I drive myself insane. I'm a little bit OCD when it comes to riffs. <laughs> well, I guess writing. it's fitting to the mental health themes then. So. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. So it, it just all depends on where I'm at. But I draw inspiration from almost everything, uh, not just music. I mean, video games, movies, local bands even. You know, we have a lot of musical talent out here in Lafayette. And so I miss that aspect of going to shows and, you know, seeing yeah. what other people are doing. But I'll, I'll really, I'll take from almost anything and make it make it my own and make it to where, uh, you know, it's, it's what I feel about a certain thing or how I feel like video games are a big influence. Any, pr any in particular? Yeah. Dark Souls. That's Dark Souls. <laughs> it's, it's pretty much the only game I actually play these days. Uh, I try to play a few others, but I've just been so jaded because of that game. I, I feel like it's a perfect game. So I, I know you know a lot of it. A lot of it is just super intense uh, in the boss fights and just when you're walking around the world, the scenery, and uh, so I take a lot of inspiration from that game for sure. I don't get as much time to play games with you know three girls running around, but the last one we did play was that new one, The Medium. I don't know if you heard about that, but no, it's. I it's kind of like a spiritual successor to sort of the old Silent Hill games, which I'm a huge fan of. Like Silent Hill 2 is probably one of my all time favorite games because it has a like a lot of layers of mental health stuff to that. Yeah. And and this game is like that, too. And then Akira Yamaoka, who did the soundtracks for those, he does the soundtrack for this, too. And it's a very like kind of heavy game. It's it's not as combat driven not not that silent not that silent hills combat driven but there's you don't like get a gun or like a board with a nail in it to like fight off the creatures like it's more kind of like there's a supernatural element and it's it's pretty cool i hope people more people check it out because it's definitely what is that is that pc or what uh i think it's on pc and then it's all like next gen stuff too like i just oh, barely wow. managed to get a uh the new xbox and that was like the one thing I wanted to play because I was like, fuck, I, know. I wanted to play Cyberpunk. And then I heard from everyone that they fucked it up. So I was like, yeah, I guess I'll wait on that until they fix all the bugs and everything. I beat Cyberpunk. That was a, that was a fun game. There's a lot missing from it. There's yeah, I mean, that's the reaction I've been hearing is it's like, yeah, it's fine. It's a fine game. But it's like there was it so is. much hype. I, I'm kind of like I wanted more than it's just fine. <laughs> I wanted it to be like yeah. the game of the year. Yeah, I got the, the PS5. I, I was lucky enough to grab one, and I have, like, one game for it. So I haven't been playing too many video games. I've been really focusing on writing. and uh, I mean, we're about six six songs into our next album. Oh, just wow. Just because of quarantine alone. Yeah, you got time. Uh, yeah. But I'm tired of writing. You know, I want to play, <laughs> play a show. Get out there to uh get out there and play the songs that people haven't even really heard yet yeah i mean this is definitely music for a live performance too like i can see people going ape shit to some of this stuff and i was also saying too like it feels like right time for this album too like i feel like a lot at least for me when i'm listening to it like thematically there's so much in there that is just so like right now like top of mind issues and another thing i appreciated about it too is that i get some albums where you know there is that like social justice and political element to it and i'm fine with that but sometimes it's like really ham-fisted and not very like thoughtful and it comes off as very like preachy and kind of like finger wagging i don't get that at all from this album it feels like very personal like these are like very anecdotal like stories and like i can tell like 
from everyone really that this is coming from a very personal place and it, it doesn't feel like a talking down to moment it's sort of like more of a cry from the rooftops to anybody who will listen kind of album and mm -hmm. and i like that i i am wondering like what do you what do you two think about there, there's a discussion that's been on and off but especially right now i feel like it's fired up again of like politics and music and like is that okay yeah thoughts on that yeah, I think it's definitely okay. Uh, <laughs> I mean, that's what punk rock and hardcore was was built right. off. Of, you know, rebelling and against the system and the man. And so, I don't see any problem with it. Uh, I think there is a certain level where it does begin to get preachy, uh, and that that always kind of bothered me about it. Yeah, but me too. Other than that, I mean, it's. It's it's a part of the music. I mean, it's yeah. I mean, my whole thing is like, if somebody's not getting mad about it, then it's probably not a very like strong statement. <laughs> right. So I'm expecting someone to get mad, and people have been getting mad, and you know, good. Okay, yeah, that's the exact <laughs> reaction that I'm hoping for. You know, I'm not trying to like just be outright like offensive to anybody, which, you know, I'm not just like trying to piss everybody off and just be like a. I don't know what you'd call it, like, uh, I guess, like, devil's advocate or whatever, but, like, I do want, I mean, these are a lot of issues that people should be mad about, and there are issues that people should be feeling strongly about and just aren't, and um, if this is causing them to feel strongly about it for the first time, then that's excellent, you know? Yeah, we're not going to say anything that we don't feel we need to say, but yeah, there's that level of, look, this is how we feel, we're going to say it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, and, I, and again, I, I totally agree with everything that you say. And it, to me, it is silly when when the argument is so vague as to be like, oh, keep the politics out of your music. Because it's like, dude, have you been paying attention <laughs> to but like also, music? What do you want? What do you want me to write about? You yeah. Know, like, what, what am I at that point? What am I supposed to write about? Yeah. It's just so strange. Yeah. There, uh, especially the time we live in now, like uh, there's a lot of things going on. There's huge political debates. It's like this. Yeah pisses me off you know this yeah. is what i want to it's it's sign of the times but again like you've done a good job where it it just feels like you just said you know you're just speaking your mind you're speaking the truth you're you know just sharing your thoughts and it doesn't would the line for me is usually and you know people can totally disagree with this but the line for me is when like you know even even as much as i love you know keith buckley and every time i die there was that moment where he like i guess at a live show like between songs was like if you're a trump supporter get out of here and like he was kind of like telling people to fuck off in the audience and i i, I i'm not a big fan of that because to me like those people are the people you need the most like that's kind of my philosophy on it like otherwise you're just preaching to the choir like if you're just giving the same message to the same people you're kind of not moving the needle at all. Whereas like the people you need to buy in are the people that you disagree with and disagree with you. So it's like, how do you, how do you get them fired up, but like in the right way where they're going to grow like, and, and kind of challenge their ideas. And that's a tough balance, but like, I don't know, not, not to like, <laughs> not to like crap on other bands, but an example where I felt like it wasn't handled well was like that latest stray from a stray from the path album which actually is kind of a guilty pleasure for me. I kind of really enjoy that album, but it's also like super corny. Like it has, it had that big single called uh, like Alt-Right Good Night or something like that. It was like super in your face and like very, and then they had the music video where they like beat the shit out of some guy with like a red hat on and it was clear what reference they were making. And I was like, all right, man, like this is, this is just kind of cringy at this point. Like, could you be a little bit more thoughtful about how you're That's putting this out there? the top for sure yeah but back back to your album though like i i'm just <laughs> i i love it though and and especially as somebody again like i've got all daughters like i've, I've got three of them 12 sit well they're about to be 13 7 and almost one right now and it's a full house and so i think i hear an album like this and i'm like i would i love the idea of even though they're not as much into heavy music as i am at least yet <laughs> yeah, i love yeah. the idea of them like having like opportunities to hear women putting themselves out there and just doing some heavy fucking music and just like just blowing the speakers out. I, I, I try to like expose them to it as much as they can. And sometimes they roll their eyes, but I'll especially bring like my six year old in and she'll I'll I'll be like, check this out. And they'll be like, 
she'll kind of like get this look on her face like that. oh that's <laughs> interesting <laughs> yeah. yeah gotta warp their minds early but that's right they'll be into it one day <laughs> Tyler, do you have a, a favorite song to play on this uh, album? On this album, yes. Mutt is probably my favorite song to play. It's uh, it's probably, I want to say it's our most simplistic song other than Torture Ship. It's just, it's got that heaviness to it. Uh, super fun song to play. Other than that, probably Locust Preacher. Yeah, Locust Preacher is just, oh, it's so good. It's like... The perfect song, but just second to again. I, even though you're saying torture ship is simplistic, that intro just just makes me want to like break shit every time. Like you know, your guitar goes in, and then just like, it all makes so much sense now. Like I I am screaming along to that every single time it it comes on, <laughs> or at least mouthing along to it. And oh man, I just want to listen yeah. to the album now. <laughs> <laughs> They're all really fun to play. Yeah. Uh, but but Mutt takes the cake for me. Cool. Yeah, love that one too. I knew you were going to say that, of course. But yeah, Another thing just popped into my head while I was talking too. There's also like a debate about this concept of this term female fronted band. I don't know, like Crow, if you have any thoughts about it, because I hear varying opinions. I hear some women I've talked to feel like it's empowering. It's a good opportunity for us to really showcase women who are doing important things in music and then i hear other people super pissed off about it and be like no it's condescending and you know it's not a genre you're putting us in this box uh away from the boys so to speak so i don't know if right. you have any opinions on that those things where you don't um, say man fronted band <laughs> yeah well um i mean it's just like not disputable that we are the minority right now in metal. Um, I don't think that there's anything wrong with like acknowledging that for sure. Um, I don't know. I guess it's just one of those things I don't really think about just because like for me being a female isn't an insult. So if somebody calls me like a female, I'm not hurt by that, I guess. But um, I do guess, I mean, I see people's point of view, like why that bothers them. But at the same time, you know, like, like I said, I'm not offended by that term. So it doesn't offend me when people call that term, call me that term, I guess. But I mean, I definitely don't want to be treated like, you know, put on some sort of pedestal because of like my, my gender or whatever. Like, I don't want anybody to treat me differently or like put my, uh, you know, judge my music differently. Um, obviously it's going to happen regardless, unfortunately, you know, but, uh, but it, I guess long story short, it just doesn't, I don't really get offended by it, but maybe I should, maybe I should do more research on it. I don't know. I mean, I think it's personal, like yeah. like you said. Like, I get both sides of it. My my take has been, for what it's worth, and and I, you know, obviously I'm a dude, so <laughs> you know my my opinion on this is maybe not the same weight, but like I agree, it's not a genre, and I think if to me everything's contextual, like everything's about mm -hmm. context. I'm a big George Carlin fan, and he had this whole routine yeah. about everything's about context, and mm -hmm. so you know if somebody's using it in the context of like oh, look at this little girl band, so cute. And it's like, it is condescending that I'm like, yeah, that's fucked up. You shouldn't be doing that. Yeah, but, yeah. But for me personally, like I actively seek out bands that have women as the mm -hmm. singer because you just, mm -hmm. you get different dynamics from that. That's just the reality of it. Like in most right. cases, you're going to get different vocal tonalities and uh, just a different sound from it. So I like to vary that up. So sometimes I will actively seek in Google or on YouTube, like female fronted metal bands and just see what new stuff I can turn up. So for me, like as sort of a specifier, as a term, it's helpful for me to find that type of music. And I've heard other people say the same. We're like, yeah, that's what I like to listen to the most. So it right. helps me find it. So on that end, I feel like the people who take it to the far end of the spectrum of like that term shouldn't even exist and people shouldn't use it would kind of bu bum me out because it makes it in a way harder to find that music on some level. But I also, yeah, that's, true. Yeah. that's a I good point. I do the same thing. I, I got into like Oathbreaker and Walls of Jericho early and uh, Gouge Away now. So without, without typing that in, I wouldn't know what to write. I, 
I'm I'm with you though. I'm I'm on kind of both sides. I don't really understand it that much. I don't I don't understand why it's offensive, and I should probably look into that more. Um, but yeah, I mean, you don't say man fronted band, so I typically call her the vocalist or the front woman. Mm-hmm. Um, but when describing it to people, I have said, you know, we are a female fronted hardcore band. <laughs> It's like weird to imagine you saying that. <laughs> <laughs> now I feel now I feel like maybe I get it a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Cuz of how Tyler <laughs> said it. <laughs> oh my god. It's when Tyler sounds it he sounds like a no. douchebag. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I say it. No, but but honestly though like as somebody who gets, you know, hundreds of press releases in my inbox a day, female fronted hardcore band will catch my attention more than just hardcore band because exactly. they're a dime a dozen and crow like you said like the reality of it just is right now and hopefully it'll change over time but sure, that absolutely. that women in in metal especially in hardcore are the minority and so to me that's like ooh, this is like potentially <laughs> you know i don't judge it just on that i'm like okay this could still be shit and sometimes it is but it's right. still like oh this i'm gonna give this an extra shot because i know like i'm not gonna get as much of this Right, and, right, for sure, yeah. absolutely. It's a, just sort of like that eye-catching thing. But again, I get it. Like, ideally, we'd get to a point where, like, there's just so much of both that it just isn't necessary. But even, like, going mm-hmm. back to high school, like, I remember, I think my first real exposure to to a front woman in metal was uh, Angela Gasso in Arch Enemy. And that mm-hmm. just, like, that blew me away. I was like, this is sick. <laughs> like, this is well, really cool. I need to hear more of this. Would, it's... I remember the first time I listened to them and I was like, you would never guess. You would never guess that she was a woman because of how, like her voice is just so, I feel like androgynous. I don't know. I mean, it, it is. Not, it, Go ahead. That's how I feel with walls of Jericho. Yeah. I, I did not know that it was a female when I first listened to them. Right. And then you listen that and you're like, Oh wow, this is so cool. And I actually prefer uh, female fronted bands. You know, I, I don't think it should be taken as a genre. No, yeah, it's, it's it's not a genre. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. I think my favorite one from sure. let. You no, know, go ahead. Sorry, I keep interrupting you. I say it's all it's all in the realm of hardcore, and it's all in the realm of metal. Like we're all in that that genre. Uh, I think it's just used as a way to describe, hey, this is different, in a way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think my favorite one from last year was uh, I don't know if you all listened to Sharp Tooth. Yeah, yeah. Was- oh, dude, that album was one of my favorites last year. I'm, I'm forgetting the name of the album now, but they also like, they had that really fun music video too, for one of the lead singles where it was like a spoof on a bunch of famous music videos. Like I, it seemed like it was like a kind of making fun of like pop music videos that make the, the singer all like girly and sort of like putting on a show and so she was like acting out like there's like the Taylor Swift video, I think, was in there. And there was like a Lady Gaga mm-hmm. video, I think she was imitating. But she's like scre- screaming. She's like screaming yeah. the whole time. So there's this fun juxtaposition of she's like doing like a little Katy Perry dance with the smile and the the big red right. lipstick. But she's just Man, like, that's ah. what I wanted for the music. Because vi- we had a music video concept that nobody thought made sense. But I was like, dude, just trust me on this one. The, the original concept for the video we just filmed yeah Dude, that's what i was trying to go for i didn't want it to make sense anyway that's, that's totally vague. you'll see the video oh my gosh the, the sh- it was, it was go supposed ahead to be, it was supposed to be an 80s aerobics video and it turned into this like oh that's 80s great thriller horror movie yeah it just totally <laughs> We were trying so hard. I mean, I guess everybody wanted it to make sense, but I didn't want it to make sense, you know, but whatever. Yeah. Yeah. There's a, um, the Ukrainian deathcore band within destruction. They did a, a, like a eighties, um, fitness video, music video, which was fun for deathcore. The, the sharp tooth song is say nothing in the absence of content check that out it is a great song and the music video is like you can already see from the thumbnail it's the like Katy perry (laughs) and the clouds with the candy bra and everything but oh it's it's fantastic that's funny i can't believe i I never even like heard of it one of these days we're gonna do a fun video 
<laughs> yeah, not so heavy. Locust so preacher, locust oh, preacher was definitely that. dark. <laughs> yeah, our next one's even darker. Uh, oh, but one one of these days we'll do a light-hearted, funny video. <laughs> yeah. But again, it's good. I mean, it it makes sense though. I see. I would see why somebody who you know does music videos and does visual medium would listen to this album, and that's what would come out. It's like I don't listen to this and necessarily think of like. You know, like an every time I die video where everyone's drinking and having a party and like being goofy. It's it's more of like the map change kind of <laughs> direction yeah. instead. Dark sad vibes. <laughs> sad boys. <laughs> sad sad boy, sad girl music. It's yeah. my favorite though. Yeah. I mean, speaking of that, do do you all go back in the day with like emo music too? Like I was I was pretty <laughs> deep into that stuff for a while. Still am. I, I don't I know why like, I'm saying for a while. <laughs> I, was like I was like 13 or 14 whenever that was like, whenever I started getting real, you know, like MySpace and all that shit. So, yeah, I definitely like, I that for me was like, whoa, this is so cool. You know? It's like seeing people like not be afraid to be like really like, I guess just like, you know, if I know a lot of people think it's corny, but seeing people that aren't afraid to like talk about their like, you know, darker emotions and stuff like that was like huge for me as a, as a young teenager. So, yeah, I still go back to like Thursday and brand oh, yeah. new, it's brand like new, that. dude. I uh, the m more emo than that, I don't, I, I don't, I don't get it. Um, but those those two for sure. You know, I'll jam some Taking Back Sunday every now and then. Hell yeah, dude! Take it, <laughs> take dude, Taking Back Sunday is the shit. <laughs> 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 oh I don't care what anyone says. At all, you know, I'm gonna jam it because it was a part of. It was You're not a, gonna turn it off. It was a part of my life at one point. You won't put it on, but you won't put, turn it off. That's yeah. right. That's exactly <laughs> right. Was... I feel that way about a lot of music. <laughs> I just won't admit it. I'll, I'll put it on all day. Like I have kind of like two main <laughs> speeds when it comes to like music. I want to jam in my car and like sing along to. It's either like super heavy fucked up music or super corny like pop punk and emo music like that <laughs> that i'm all about either of those all day long see i think i listen to like a majority of like indie music like broken social scene is probably one of my favorite bands that i just go to it's like i, I haven't even heard so of them oh uh, they're they're a great band from canada they're also in like do make say think and all these other like weird uh, it's multi-instrumental uh with these really cool beautiful vocals but like i play so much heavy music so much fast music that like that's kind of like my escape and my break yeah you need like a palate cleanser kind of yeah. that's the way i put it and it takes me and it calms me down and it stops me from thinking of like aggressive angry riffs yeah you gotta like step away from it for a bit like especially even with like it helps me too with my reviews because you start to get into a rut where you're using like the same words to describe everything. Cause you're just listening to like rah, 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 like all day long. And so I need to like listen to something a little bit different so that like the, the some new inspiration can come around. Um, and speaking of which too, if, if you are into like indie music, I can't spoil it too much cause uh, I'm going to, I just put together my review, but I got to listen to the new, the armed album and that is a fucking trip of a record like nice. it's like it's so weird for them because like untitled and i don't know if either of you listen to the armed at all no oh man check out no. untitled which has a great cover too it's a spoof on like the ba david bowie uh with the you know white background with the like rainbow lightning bolt on his face <clears throat> it's like that except it's like this hipster bald dude smoking a cigarette and so it's a very striking cover. And then it's like this super aggressive hardcore record that is probably my most like re-listened album of the of the like 2010s. But now they've gone this like experimental route where I describe the new album as like stuff like MGMT and the Animal Collective and the strokes like thrown into a blender with those hardcore influences. And it's like the weirdest fucking album I have I probably ever imagined. This sounds sound like. It's so oh. weird. They have a couple singles up, so like, I and I want I I want you to have the same experience I did though. So like, look up um the armed, 
I think uh, I'm trying to think of their earlier songs. Uh, one of them was like, was it like Paradise something was the single from Paradise Day, I think. So Paradise Day, I think that's from, yeah, that's from Untitled. So listen to some tracks from Untitled and there's a bunch of videos on YouTube. And you'll also see the progression of their art style in their music videos because they start off as kind of like pretty basic. And then you get into the newer shit. So, and also they had Tommy Wiseau in one of their music videos just for no reason at all. And then the dude from, uh, the dude, uh, what date? Happen, I don't, e I know. See, and then they got, what is it? David Hayter, the Metal Gear Solid guy. He's on the newest music video again for no reason at all. And it's just bizarre. But so if you listen to the newer songs, like uh, all futures or average death, average death is the most like colorful kind of like Wes Anderson, almost looking music video, but all futures is just like, just, it's just straight up like weird indie rock with hardcore influences. And I don't know. It's crazy. You should, you should definitely check it out. I'll be, I'll be talking about them a whole lot more. And, um, yeah, we're just on a random tangent now, but I just love to, I love talking about music. <laughs> Fuck it, man. <laughs> I was watching that video. It looks, it's very like cinematically well done. I'm yeah. not listening to it right now, but I'll listen to it in a second. Yeah, I just the, have the volume down, but it looks cool. Yeah, the, yeah, it it's very visually interesting, but then the music right. is very just weird. Like it's such a weird trajectory for them to go to. Like they they were you know aggressive in the same way that Capra is basically. And now they're like, I don't know what they are. <laughs> I don't even know how. I think what I it. need right now is weird. I think I need a little weird in my life right now. So. Well, well, that'll be the that'll be the one then. That that one comes out um, in two weeks, I think. So two mm -hmm. weeks from today, I'm pretty sure. And no shit of like especially, it was helpful knowing that it was a more gradual growth for you all too. Because again, for me, it felt like. You were just suddenly a band, you put out the single, and then, like, boom, like, you have an album, and you're on Metal Blade and everything. It reminded me a little bit of, like, uh, the Black Dahlia murder, in a way. Um, oh, cool. Considering it was Metal Blade, too, like, just similar right, right. story, but maybe, you know, maybe it's just yeah. a little well, bit Well, there's just so much behind the scenes that, um, that you don't really see, you know what I yeah. mean? Like, uh, it's, like, publicly, all of a sudden, like, we have all this, like stuff that's available but it, it there is a lot that was like you know not really something that you would i guess see yeah it was it was years in the making and uh like i said we had an album before and i took it down off of everything it just it oh so it was it. up like it was listenable at some point it, at one point it was listenable it just wasn't who we are mm. And uh, we we realized that when we got Crow in the band that like this is who we are. So we took everything else down, and so to the outside perspective, we of course we would have just popped up out of nowhere and just been on Metal Blade. And but it it was it was a culmination of five years in the making. No, that makes sense. I mean, <laughs> and when y'all are, I hope you're holding on to those songs though. Cause when y'all are super famous, you should like be like the secret unreleased album that nobody could listen to <laughs> no, make a it. buck off of it. At least do you hate it? I hate it. Hey, that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> people want to hear it, especially because the people are going to hear this interview and, and they're going to be like, well, fuck now I have to hear it. Like, I want to know what's so bad about it. <laughs> you can hear it. That's kind of the the unfortunate thing about like sort of the social media age too though is that generally that's what gets like the click like when there's a negative and there's a whole psychology behind it too when there's some like negativity react to it if you evoke a negative reaction from one or you know that it's evoking a negative reaction it spawns more eyes on it like case in point right now this whole I don't know if you've heard about mm -hmm. this whole like Lil Nas yeah, thing that's going yeah, on sure. like that worked out so well for him because like yeah. all that like hate clicks generated so much free advertising for him that mm -hmm. now definitely I was it's, thinking that yeah it's just blown up and so like and I've learned that too from like this YouTube channel the, the punk rock MBA he talks about it a lot too like he doesn't make negative content but he'll use 
kind of manipulative negative thumbnails to get the initial foot in the door. And so like, I'll even do that sometimes too, just because I know it works. And it's like, people have different right. opinions about that. But for me, it's like, if it gets you in the door and then you get in and you realize like, oh, this is actually like not what I expected. Now I'm going to stick around and listen to it. I'm like, is it worth it? I think it is, yeah. but I could see people having different opinions. It's risky. On that. You're playing a risky game. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it's, it's a gamble. We it's actually a gamble. have a, a video circulating somewhere with our old vocalist. And I got an Instagram message last night at about 3 a.m. And they were asking if Crow was kicked out of the band. Oh, no. <laughs> and they were calling, like, they were saying, like, you guys are idiots. If she's out of the band, that's the most moronic move. Please send like, me that. <laughs> Why didn't you tell well, they, me about this? Well, that person would be right. So there there you go. Right. <laughs> <laughs> they were send right. me that screenshot it, immediately, dude. <laughs> I, had go, I had to go and explain to him, like, no, this is, you know, pre-2018 uh and he was like well thank god like i'm buying the record and i was like oh. <laughs> that's incredible <laughs> are there any like i mean i'm sure the recording process was probably a little bit different but are there any like good stories from putting this album together and all the process that went into that uh recording process was in july of 2019 uh, we had eight, I want to say eight or nine songs put together, and we went in, did that, finished the album, and then we sat on it for quite a while. No. Yeah, it was <laughs> finished. And then we, yeah, we sat on it. We got approached by Metal Blade. And so we knew, okay, we're going to be sitting on this for a while so that we can go through the signing and everything. And in March is when the pandemic hit. And as soon as that hit, uh, Metal Blade kind of like scrapped the deal. They were like, hey, like we're on hiatus until further notice. And we were like, oh no, we just oh, like. Damn, that we, sucks. It, oh, that's true. I remember that. That hurt. I'll so bet. And so they, we sat on it. We waited, we waited, we waited. And then they hit us up in July again. And they were like, hey, we want to move forward with this deal. And we were thinking, okay, we're going to be sitting on this for almost a year now. And uh, so we actually went back into the studio and we had three more songs written at that time. And we added <laughs> Mutt, Deadbeat Assailant, and Transfiguration. So those three were recorded completely separate. And uh, that process was a little different because it was social distancing pandemic. So we all went in separate uh, to do it, which wasn't my favorite way of doing it but uh i think they turned out okay they uh they definitely fit the album and i'm glad we had that time to do that glad we sat on it for as long as we did and you know i do think it is the right time to release the album well anything else about the album or the band in general future plans that that you want to share or that you can share <laughs> So, yeah, definitely the album comes out April 23rd. Um, we are looking into touring. Um, we're going to we're going to book we're going to book something for October. It looks like uh, and if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, you know, we're not going to be mad about it. It's uh, we're trying to be as safe as possible. Yeah. And we've got a new music <laughs> video airing uh, on the day of release. Oh, hell yeah. Can't wait to see that one. We're all really excited about that one, too. Cool. <laughs> I need to go watch it like four more times today. So <laughs> <laughs> This is the one. This is the video that, uh, that you're talking about. 80s aerobics. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, now I'm interested to see how it turns out yeah. with that backstory. Yeah. You'll realize this is not an 80s aerobics. <laughs> <laughs> Almost immediately. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll keep that in mind. Interesting. Yeah, and um, I hope you all come out at some point when when touring is a thing again to to Portland, Oregon. Like, there's a uh, there's some cool. Well, there were some cool venues here. Hopefully, they're still <laughs> they're still running. As depressing as it is to say that, but yeah, right. We got a cool scene out here, and I I would love to catch a show and and get a beer too. Like, it's fun to like. Sure. I miss that too because I used to like 
you know, I could get on a press pass and go into the show and I could hang out in the green room or we'd sit at the bar. Like I sat down with the bassist from Ensafirum and talked about how he's a substitute kindergarten teacher back in Finland in his spare time. And <laughs> like, I miss doing that. Like, it's it's just fun. I definitely miss socializing with people. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, uh, the other thing that I always ask bands that are on here, since this is all focused on like trying to get out names of lesser known groups, are there any other like metal or hardcore bands out there that you feel like deserve a lot more attention that you'd like my listeners to hear about? Uh, well, how much time do you have? <laughs> I know that's that's the usual. The go-to answer is usually that, or there's too many to name, and I don't want to leave anyone out. So. Yeah, uh, I mean, I'm cool with, you know, leaving some out because we don't have, uh, I think my number one right now, based out of Louisiana, uh, is Torture Garden. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yeah. I think they're my, they're definitely my favorite band. I mean, you've got, you've got others around our area too, like Radiant Knife, not a hardcore band, but Radiant Knife is really I've good. I've heard of them, I think. Yeah, they're, they're making some waves for sure. It's a two piece, um, really really crazy metal band uh and then crow's brothers actually in a band from here uh called pale misery and they're just super good oh cool you already know i gotta say it city hunter from denver they're the they're so good dude i can't stop talking about them dude denver has like the craziest scene like it's ridiculous how many good bands come out of denver is it because i never i feel like i never hear about Denver, like I never hear bands coming from Denver. But no, they're just... like, because like it's almost like um, uh, Ethan from Primitive Man. He's kind of like the, the like, big big daddy figure of like all the bands, and he like okay. helps organize a lot of the shows and everything. So like obviously Primitive Man, then Vermin Womb. Um, there's this sick band called uh, oh god damn it I always do this I like blank on it I know they've got a single coming out too because I was just talking to the guitar player again but um, they sound like Ulcerate but uh, fuck why can't I think of their name I want to like shout them out again too maybe it'll come back to me and then the so dude from check uh, out, you gotta check out City Hunter City sure. Hunter okay City Hunter the only cool. I know from Denver Dreadnought and yeah, Dreadnought. In the Company of Serpents. Yeah, they're good too. The dude from uh, Nightbringer and Eratos and Oculus, he's also like out of that area. He lives kind of more on the outskirts and is a bit more of a hermit, but he's you know, that same area. I, I just think found. You, I think you and I probably know, you know, some of the same heart. We're all in the same groups and stuff. So, I mean, of course, Callus Dowboys, shout out to them. Under the Pier. Uh, I just recently discovered Johnny Booth and hmm. been blowing my mind lately. I just found one of the City Hunter albums on Bandcamp and I'm loving There's that. There's only one, yeah. Uh, I'm There's loving that one. album art. It looks kind of like a spoof on like the town that Dude. dreaded sundown or something. Dude, it's totally a torso, like the collector type. Oh, that's great. Like I love that burlap sack. <clears throat> like masked killer that very look. very cool yeah dude it's a classic if you like that kind of stuff if you're like a kind of like a slasher nerd oh that yeah album is the shit big forever. time well fuck now we should have been talking about that this whole time That's probably all right. you got, you got time to go, uh, what's your favorite <laughs> i mean each song is like a minute it's grind chorus so what's your favorite slasher minute. though oh yeah uh okay well it's probably a tie <laughs> It's probably a tie between Torso and Tenebrae. I love Argento. He's like my yeah, favorite. Yeah, Ar- oh, dude, time. Argento. So Tenebrae is like one of his lesser, I mean, it's still a really popular yeah. one, but like people know him for Suspiria. Yeah. But Tenebrae is the shit. I made Tyler watch it. He enjoyed it too, nice. as far as I know. The shit. Torso is like an old, I'm pretty sure it's like an old Italian. Uh, yeah, those, is it another like Jello style yeah. film? or Yeah, yeah and it's like uh i want to say like 70s probably dude if you like slashers that i one love is really hugely love inspirational it. to a lot of directors and just an amazing movie all around and i'm trying to get tyler to watch it hell yeah as far as i know yeah i haven't uh, seen torso yet i saw tinder break that was incredible yeah. do it man yeah. like all those giallo films are just so yeah. like they're That's just different they're just such a they're different really vibe good. 
I, I'm so like stoked that you brought up Argento too, because normally yeah, I'm in a crowd of people and you bring up Argento and they're like, "Who the fuck are you talking right. about?" And no, huge Argento nerd, huge Argento. Awesome, nerd. awesome. Yep. Yeah, we we love Argento here and just horror movies in general, from the profound to the incredibly cheesy, like all of it. We're big fans. Anytime, hit me up. I'll give you a suggestion if you need. Yeah, Anytime. please, please do, especially newer stuff too, because like it's harder to like. There's so much now that it's harder to find like the good stuff because yeah, and I love a good like so bad that it's good movie, but a lot of them now are just like so bad that they're bad. Yeah, like there's no really <laughs> there's no redeeming quality to it. I'm too serious for comedy. Yeah, I I also do like um, I like that more heavy stuff too, like a uh, hereditary. Yeah, like, I love Tyler's yeah. movie. <laughs> yeah. But I it, oh, it runs the gamut. I'll, I'll I'll watch anything from that to Suspiria, both versions to um, uh, Friday the Thirteenth. Like you know, fuck it, whatever, whatever they got. We got a Shutter subscription. <laughs> There's some decent stuff on there. All those crazy Nick Cage movies they've been putting out too. Like oh, Mandy was pretty good actually. Oh, Man- we hated it. You hated Mandy, dude. We I loved Mandy. Oh, I loved Mandy. Dude, I just can't with Nick Cage. I can't do it. I cannot. I cannot. And I went into it with an open mind. I couldn't do it, dude. I just couldn't. I, I also can't stand Nicolas Cage. Oh, that makes me sad. The entire rest of the movie, I was down with. The entire rest of the movie. He was the only thing in the movie I couldn't do. I feel like if any other actor was in that movie, I would have probably You would have liked it more. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. I... I mean, part of it, too, is that I think I was the perfect age in the 90s that when, like, the true, pure, crazy Nick Cage movies were coming out, like Face Off and, um, you know, all those types of movies. Like, I'll never forgive him for Wicker Man. Okay. Oh, God. The bees. Oh, God. The bees. (laughs) (laughs) That's where I'm at. That's where I'm at with Nick Cage. Oh, I I tried to watch Mom and Dad. I do like that one. I do I, like that. That movie. looks like fun. I haven't watched that one yet, but it's I, could not, I could not get into it <laughs> because of Nick Cage. Because of Nick Cage, I love Nick Cage at his craziest, though. Like when he starts oh. making all the meme faces that you see floating around. Like those are. Have you seen Vampires Kiss? No. Oh my god! I don't care that you hate Nick Cage. You have to watch Vampires Kiss. Oh. Like, and I guarantee, like, it is the weirdest <laughs> movie. Because it's not what you think it's going to be. It's like literally just a guy, he thinks that he's turning into a vampire, but really he's just a crazy guy with a weird voice and his accent keeps changing throughout the movie. And it is the most bizarre movie I think Joanne and I have ever watched. It was very strange. And there's that classic like Nick Fade, Nick Nick Cage meme face that everybody uses where he's kind of like, like, got the really, yeah, that is from Vampire's Kiss. Oh, okay. And right. it is his performance is that is just the chef's kiss. <laughs> it's the the craziest shit you will ever see. So he really went for it. I'm going to watch it. And if I don't like it, I'm going to tell you about it. Oh, I, I'm sure you'll hate it, which is part watch of the fun. Torso but first. Yeah, watch Torso first. Okay. That's, that's a better film. But this is, yeah, Vampire's Kiss is weird. I think it was made in the 80s too like the late 80s early 90s but that's like one of his earlier films and is it's, it's a it's a it's a ride but anyways it's the one he got right huh it's the one he got right <laughs> it's the one he got right i mean i thought lord of war was all right i i honestly don't watch too many of his movies no lord of war was pretty good that was back when jared leto wasn't a crazy person too so <laughs> Now he's like an island with a cult, and I don't know what's going on with him. (laughs) Oh, oh, you're talking about. I thought you were talking about a movie, but that's no, no, that's for real. (laughs) That is that is actually happening. Uh, Man, Hollywood, it does fucked up things to you. (laughs) Well, (laughs) on that note, any uh, any final thoughts before we wrap up here? Think so. Thank you so much. I mean, this was an enjoyable. I definitely enjoyed this. Good. Yeah. Good. Great. This was a lot of fun. We should do it again. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just uh, buy our album. 
Yeah, absolutely. That's all, that's yeah, one hundred percent. Everyone listening, buy this fucking album because it is <laughs> it is so good. I will definitely, even though I have the files, I will be getting a physical copy for the shelf oh, behind me for so sure. Much. I love the art too. Like it's very Thanks. striking. And I'll need to get a new shirt, too, because, Tyler, the one you sent me, I am too fat now to fit into it. So <laughs> I'm going to have to buy a new one <laughs> and lose some weight, too. Joanne and I are getting back on our diet and exercise. So <laughs> After the interview, I'll send you a shirt. Um, oh, you don't have to, man. I'll, I'll buy the one. Album art is, uh, oh, it's Bandcamp Friday, dude. You get the, the deal. Hell yeah. Um, That's right. The album art was done by Ben Fruit. I want to shout him out real quick. Oh, cool. He did a great job. I love it. It's he, he nailed everything we were going for. You know, I just realized too, like looking at it again, what I mean, I love a lot about it, but I'm also a big Twin Twin Peaks fan, and it's got strong Sarah Palmer or not Sarah, Laura Palmer vibes to it too. Now that I'm thinking about it, yeah, that's true. Yeah, kind of the I've rap. never thought it that way, but I I can definitely see it. Yeah, yeah sure. I mean, it's it's literally like she's half wrapped in plastic, kind of. So. Yeah. <laughs> wanted to go for that uh sort of jacob bannon from yeah that early. too for sure i picked up on that i love bannon's covers are so cool but this one this love one's up there up. with that this is great yeah he, really he absolutely nailed it awesome well yeah thanks again and yeah i i enjoyed this too i love having people back on second time around too especially now that we've gotten to know each other a little bit and and just stay in touch too like i always say you know friend me wherever if you want to just like chat off the record or whatever like i'm always a fan of that too so anytime sure. yeah thanks for so sure. much all right cool have a good one you too yep well bye yep bye it's still your day you see And that does it for another episode of Trench Talk. As always, I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed recording it. Please do, again, subscribe if you have not already. You can follow us on Discord. You can support on Patreon. All those things are highly appreciated. Good ways to keep up. But as always, thanks just for being here. And I think that'll be it for now. Flight of Icarus signing off. I will see you in the trenches. Yeah.